Statistics and Excel, Roulette Probability Example Part Number 3. Get ready and some coffee, because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Because if we want realism, we need some data-driven criticism. And driving data, that's what we do. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our trust me i'm an accountant product line yeah it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point, building the tables as we construct them from here, or possibly just look at this from a theory standpoint for probability, statistics, or just the roulette wheel in general. If you do have access to this workbook, we have three tabs down below, the example tab, the practice tab, the blank tab, the example tab, in essence, and answer key, the practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting the blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and we'll be continuing on in the blank part of the worksheet going forward practicing our excel tools as we go let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we've done thus far and what we will be doing this time so we're looking at the roulette wheel specifically thinking about probability as a subcomponent that we can then apply more broadly to statistics in general remembering that these games of chance because they have been constructed based on the core concepts of probability are great ways for us to practice with uh, probability so even if you don't like the concept of gambling or something like that these are still great tools to look at to analyze the concepts which then are very applicable in uh, many different areas so we're considering the roulette wheel where we have many different places that we can basically bet uh, within the roulette wheel we're going to deconstruct each of them and we're starting to see that there's basically a pattern with them when we think of the expected value noting the expected value takes into consideration two things one being the payout and the second being the odds expected value typically being thought of as what we can predict to happen in the long run we don't know what's going to happen time to time you can beat the odds on the short run but in the long run the more the game is played the more accurate we would expect the expected value to become so we did this by first listing out the numbers on the roulette wheel recognizing that we have basically 38 of them 34 being the actual numbers and then the zero and the double zeros making the 38 basically numbers on the american uh, roulette wheel and then we took some of the different things that we can bet on to start to analyze them one by one, starting with possibly the easiest thing, red versus black, which is equivalent to a similar odds calculation for even versus odds. So we have a similar kind of concept. We can say the payout for that is one to one. You put the dollar down. If you win, they put a dollar on top. You take $2 back, one being your original bet, the other being the winnings. If you lose, they take your dollar, right? And we can analyze the odds of that, which you can think of as similar to a coin flip, but the coin isn't even because it's not 50-50 because of the zero and the double zero. So you only have 18 out of the 38 that could win versus the 20 out of 38. And that gives us uh, a 47-37% chance versus a 52 chance. We could still possibly have an even game, even though we have uneven odds, but we would have to adjust the payout for that to be the case. So the fact that the payout is even, but we have we have an unfavorable situation with regards to 
uh, the payout means that we have an unfavorable amount of basically five cents, you know, 0. 0.0562 of the dollar that if we play it over and over would be the unfavorable amount we would expect over time. We did a similar thing, but then analyzing a different part of the board here, that being numbers one through 12, which would be similar odds to here, two through 12, uh, three through 12, right? So we can have the first 12 numbers, the second 12 numbers, and uh, the last 12 numbers. And if we were to do that, then we could say the payout is now two to one. They're gonna pay us $2 per $1 that we put on the board. So if we put $1 on the board and we win, they put $2 on top of it. We take back the $3, one being our original investment, the other two being the winnings. If we lose, they just take the $1. So that's going to be the idea. So it's not favorable because of that alone, uh, right? Because you have to take into account the odds. The odds were 12 out of 38 versus 26 out of 38. And when we combine those things together, we get an expected value over the long run, which was the same as the expected value here, making us think that there might be a trend happening here. Next, we're gonna now see what if I just bet on one number, which is unlikely to happen, right? But we're gonna get a bigger payout. So we can think about the bigger payout and how big would that payout have to be in order for it to be an even game, even though the odds are unlikely for it to come up. So we'll calculate that and we'll take a look at some other examples. And then later we'll think about, okay, what if let's do some empirical testing and try to run scenarios within Excel which you can also use to basically build your own kind of game if you wanted to look at it that way. Let's go to the practice tab. That's gonna give us some pre-formatted cells so you can work through some of these practice problems with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started to construct our worksheets here. We're gonna to continue to construct our worksheets practicing our Excel formatting in this tab as we go. All right, let's start off with blank, making a skinny V tab. This is gonna be our new place. So I'm gonna make it the same skinniness by going to the Q, home tab, clipboard, paintbrush. I'm gonna make a skinny V, skinny V. All right, so this is gonna be, now we're gonna be betting on, I have a caps lock, bet on one number. So what are our chances for that? Let's analyze that bet. So we'll isolate it, kind of like a scientist over here, home tab, font group, and then we'll analyze it by itself on its own. So we're gonna say, what's gonna be the payout? If we bet on one number, payout, let's make that black and white, font group, black, white. And so I'm gonna say uh, the payout, payout is gonna be 35, I believe it's 35 to one. Woo, so we put $1 down and let's make, let's make this negative. We put $1 down and if we win, they give us $35 on top of it, right? So we take back thir uh, so we take back the, the $1 we put down and the 35, the $1 being our original bet, the 35 being on top of that. Now, does that make it favorable? Clearly not, because the odds of us uh, winning are quite low when we look at the odds. So you could have a system where it was favorable, uh, by, but the question would be, what would the payout have to be in order for it to be a favorable game or an even game, given fact that the likelihood of hitting that number is quite low? Okay, so, so that's going to be the payout. So we're going to say the total numbers that we have available was, once again, 36 numbers plus the zero and the double zero means we have 38 numbers that could come up. And so, so uh, hold on a sec, what am I doing? Let's not do that, Just, let's do it this way. I did that again. Let's say that our, our payout, if we win, is 35, and if we lose, loss or lose, uh, we lose a dollar. All right, so I'm just writing the same thing two different ways. Let's go ahead and select that, go to the Home tab, Font Group, Borders, let's put some blue around it. I use that blue, you can hit the bucket, standard uh and i'm going to go to that blue right there boom and so there we have it so now let's think about the odds the next component the odds what could happen well we could win we could lose and then the total should add up to one if we've calculated everything properly so i'm going to go to the home tab font group 
bucket drop down. Let's make it black. Let's make it white alignment. Let's center it. And so we're going to we're going to be betting on one number bet. So what's our likelihood of winning if I just chose like an eight, right? What's my likelihood of spinning that good old roulette wheel and it landing on an eight, right? It doesn't seem very likely. It's not very likely, but if I win, they're going to pay me $35. So is that, is that fair? So let's check it out. So, uh, so, uh, we have one chance out of the total, uh, numbers, total numbers. How many numbers are, are there? Well, this is what I was doing before. We have the 36 numbers plus the zero and the double zero. So we're out of 38 numbers. Well, if I get one number that could win, all of the other 37 numbers are losers, right? So I can say this equals 38 minus one. 37 numbers will be losers out of 38 still. So if I sum that up, it has to add up to one. The total ratio has to add up to one, which would be 38 over 38. If I look at that from a percentage standpoint, the odds would be equal. You have a one out of 38. If I percentify that to recognize that home tab number group, percentify to recognize adding some decimals, it's only gonna happen uh, at odds of 2.63% of the time to lose. How? What's the odds of that happening? 37 divided by 38, let's percentify to recognize, add some decimals, obviously 97, 37, because some of those two have to add up to one, which I can do 38 divided by 38 or equals the sum of these two numbers has to be 100%. Let's check it out. Percentify to recognize it's at 100%. That's our double check, kind of like a double entry accounting system that we've got things done correctly because these two, of course, have to be adding up to one. If they don't, there's a problem. You got your balance sheets out of balance. People are gonna get pissed. You, you have to figure it out. Go back and figure out what you did. You did something wrong. Let's go to the brackets and bucket drop down and make that blue. Okay, so now we have the two components to calculate our expected value. So the expected value then the determining factor to see if it's a fair or unfair game, which we're expecting might come out to that maybe 5.26 cents, 0.0526 on the negative, uh, unfavorable. Let's check it out and see if that is indeed the case, right? Let's go black and white here and say, okay, if we win, what happens if we win? Uh, we're going to get a payout of $35, $35, but the odds of that happening is only equal to the 2.63% percentify to recognize number group percentify, add some decimals. So if we multiply that out 35 times the, the 2.63%, let's just add some decimals there, do, 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 do like right there. And then for the loss, we're going to say that's going to happen. We lose only a dollar. We only lose a dollar, dude. Uh, what's the likelihood that that happens though? It's like 97.37%. And we're going to go, let's percentify to recognize multiplying that out. So the loss of $1 times the 97.37, adding some decimals, do, 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 do. Let's do that many decimals. So that gives us an expected, expected value. I misspelled it up there. I'll do a spell check later. Equals the sum. I can't stop my flow, man. I'm rolling right now. I can't stop for spelling. Can't stop for something stupid like spell. Home tab, number group. Let's add some decimals. Oh my goodness. It came out to 0 0.05526. So it's still unfavorable. Uh, and this one, of course, is a little bit more difficult to see because of, because of the odds being much different and the payout being much different. But clearly the idea being that if, in the long run, you would expect to have this basically 5.62 5 cents being paid in essence on average to the casino per game, right? Per chance would be the general 
uh, the the general idea. Does that mean that you can't win? What if you put what if you put a dollar on eight and you hit it? Well, that's great. Then in the short run, you probably want to stop right there, take your dollar and leave. Or you probably, you know, you know, maybe you want to bet, like just play around with one dollar bets on, on here afterwards and not just spend your 38 right after that, right? Or something like, I don't, I don't know. But if you played for a long period of time and you kept on betting on eight or any of the you know, a number from the long period of time, since you have the same odds for any of the number, you would expect then that you're going to lose on average over that long point of that, uh, what would you say, 5.26 cents amount, 0.0526. All right, on the negative. So that's going to be the, the general idea that once again, the takeaway, let's select these and go to the home tab font group and put some borders. Now, by the way, you can imagine a whole bunch of betting strategies that you can you can think about with with regards to these. I'm not we're not going to get into that in in detail right now, but the, that's the general concept in terms of the long run. All right. So so what you might ask the question of well, what payout would uh, would make the game fair? So in other words. How, is there if if even though I have this very low chance of getting uh, my one number out of 38, is there a payout that can compensate for that and make it a fair or an even game? So in other words, notice that like right here, you could say, well, well, what if I made the payout to be like a million dollars to one dollar, right? Well. That given that it's going to be it's still going to be a favorable game you might you know you're, you're not likely to win but if you do win you're going to get a huge payout and it only costs you a dollar right so that so you'd think well that would be something that you might be willing to take on in that case or, or you know you might be hanging out to take that on repeatedly if you, you were offered that deal you know multiple times of course right would be the general idea so we have to weigh those two things out so what what payout would it what I need it to be in order for it to be not unfavorable 0.0526, but an even game where in the long run, both would uh, come out even generally. All right, let's make this black and white and we can say, all right, well then uh, let's just think about it. Like we can test it, we can keep on testing it. But if I just say, okay, what, what I guess it would be I would say it, you, you, would, you would think that it would have to be something like if there's 38 numbers uh, and you only get one of them is going to win, you would expect to be fair, it would be 38 minus one, right? 37, so you would expect 37 to one. So if they paid us out 37 to one, you'd expect that might be a fair system. So let's take this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab that and drag it down. Let's take these. I'm kind of dragging it down to here and let's call this the pay out. Let's make this a border up top, home tab, font group, border, uh, black and white. And so the payout, we're thinking 37 to one. Let's test that out. So let's make the one a negative one. Let's get rid of this last bit here. Okay. And so you can think about it this way. If you win, you get $37 and if you lose, you lose the dollar, right? So I'm going to then say, okay, let's border blue that home tab font group and border blue. Okay. So then what are my odds? So the odds of winning, the odds are uh, the same that we had before for the win. Let's just copy this by saying this is going to be equal to the win and I'll just copy this over, format, paint, boom, boom, loss, and then fair. Let's make that, let's format paint it this time. Let's go to this one and format paint it, home tab, clipboard, format painter, and just brush that, that'll be faster. And then we're gonna say this equals the, uh, the one bet, one number bet is what I called it. Okay, one number bet, and then I'm going to copy that down. And then if we win, if we win, uh, we're going to say that we get 
or what are the odds that we win? It's going to equal 1 over, let's say, 36 plus 2 again. And to lose, we have a chance of 38 minus the 1, uh, or uh, 37 out of 38. So once again, if I sum this up, we get the same odds, 38 over the sum of 38. If I look at it this way, this equals the 2 over 38. I'm going to copy, or the 1 over 38. I'm going to copy that across. And I messed this up. This shouldn't be 76. It should be 38. And then let's say the expected value. I'm sorry. What am I doing? Let's just copy this formatting up top. I'm just going to take that and go to the Home tab, Clipboard, Format Painter, and brush that down here. And then I also did it this way, it's the sum of these two. So the odds are the same. So we have the, the 2.63 and the 97.37. The payout is what we have changed. So let's calculate the expected value. Let's do it this way this time. Expected value, I'll just say equals that. I'm going to make this black and white. Home tab, font group, let's make it black and white. And then we're going to say to win, let's say this equals once again and say win versus loss. I'm going to grab that and drag it down. Win, there's the loss to the expected value. And so we're going to say to win, it's going to equal, how much are we going to get to win? We're going to get a win of $37. Uh, but that's going to happen only equal to 2.63% of the time. Percentify that. Number group, percentify, add some decimals, and let's multiply it. So 37 times this, boom. Let's uh, add some decimals, do, 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 take it out to here. And then to lose is going to be negative, negative 1. And that's going to happen 97.37% of the time. So we're going to go home tab, number group, percentify, add some decimals, multiply it, negative 1 times the 97.37, add some decimals, doot, 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 or right there. And I actually want 4. I do want 4. So I'm going to say here, add one more here. So the expected value is equal to the sum of these two as for one two three four so it's zero right let's add one more just so we can see that it's zero all the way across so that's what we would so it is possible there to figure out right what an even game would be over the long run even though the odds of us winning are very low in any particular play right so if i played this over and over for a long time we would expect our expected value to gravitate towards uh, zero, right? Obvi so, so that's going to be the general idea. If I select this, I'm going to go to the Home tab, Font Group, and say uh, Border and Blue or Blue and Border. Now, note that I kind of intuited that to get to that 37. I didn't really like adjust the algebra to kind of figure that out now you could say well what if what if i did it a different like let's say this was 35 and that's giving me my negative expected value but i have all this connected together now and i'm trying to figure out what would this number have to be in order to get this expected value to be favorable of some whatever i want it to be even or favorable so obviously if i wanted to go towards even I would expect that I can have to increase this, right? 35 to 36 and so on. And I can randomly do it that way. Uh, I can also use a tool in Excel called Goal Seek. So now that all this is connected, I could say, what number does this need to be to make that cell zero? And I can ask Excel to, to do that calculation. This could be a useful tool when you're running more complex kind of worksheets and you want to change one factor to see what the end result would be, right? So let's just say that's under the data tools up top. So if I go into the data and I go into the forecast, we have a what if analysis, we have a goal seek. Now note that I'm not on the cell. I can be on any cell to do this because it's gonna change this number, right? It's gonna change the number I, I want it to change, right? So I'm gonna say goal seek 
And then here's the arguments that we have to give. I want to say set this cell, meaning that cell right there, that's my end result. I want it to be equal to, I'm going to hard code this, meaning I'm going to type it in. I want that to be zero. And then how am I going to get it to be zero? Well, it's connected to the cells above it. And the one that I want to change to get that one to be zero is going to be uh, this cell. So, so we're basically saying, Excel, would you please change this number to whatever it needs to be to make this number equivalent to the hard coded or typed in amount of zero, right? And then it'll do the calculation and say, okay, it needs to be 37. So just a useful tool again, when you have a more complex worksheet and you're trying to kind of back into something, then, then it's kind of like an, al you can think of it kind of like an algebra problem but it's a more complex equation. So you're not breaking it down to a formula. You can kind of back into the number instead of rewriting the formula. You could just tell Excel, use trial and error, please, to keep on plugging in the numbers as a computer. So it's easy for you to do until you change this number to make this one correct. And it's just gonna be, it's just like Excel taking a formula and changing the, the you know, X to make Y, whatever <laughs> it needs to be or whatever answer you want, not through algebra, but, but kind of through repetition. All right, so the general idea here is that once again, uh, we came out to our long-term scenario of losing the 5.26 cents, 0.0562 uh, of the dollar on the negative. So that would be the average amount we would expect to lose per uh, game which again doesn't help us so much on the short run but the more times we play that's what we should gravitate towards you would think in uh, the long term that's going to be the uh, general that's the general idea and we get to that even though we have a situation where the likelihood of us winning is quite low because the two things we have to consider is is the likelihood of winning and the payout right so those two things could balance out uh, in order to calculate basically that expected value now we can test this try to test it empirically with excel running a scenario in excel and see if that is indeed the case which we'll do in uh, future presentations to kind of wrap our minds around this and it could possibly give you an idea of how you can run mock scenarios and games you know basically using excel random generation functions let's do the spell check before we stop here spell check because i know i misspelled stuff and that might bother people uh but expected expected that's it that's all i misspelled or is it just because i'm on that cell no that's it man i'm i'm getting better i spell like a champ all right so